Hey guys, I'm Srishti and I'm back with another set of 5 question series for you related to finance. So today, the topics that we are going to discuss are really important to understand as a finance student. Do watch the video till end so that you could have a basic understanding of the concepts. And if you find any query related to any of the things, then do ask your query in the comment section below so that we can interact and I can answer your questions in a much better way. Do subscribe to our channel for more related videos. Hit the bell icon. So starting with the first question of finance for today. The question says, under whose chairmanship a six-member committee was set up to improve the mortgage back securitization in May 2019. So this is a really straightforward question in which you have to answer that under whose chairmanship this six member committee was formed. But before answering this question, let us first look at what mortgage back securitization means because it is a concept which is related to finance and as a finance student, you must know that what does it mean. So mortgage back security is an investment similar to a bond that is made up of a bundle of home loans as the name suggests bought from the banks that issued them. So under securitization there is a special purpose vehicle involved in it and we are going to discuss this concept in the next question. Now before looking further in the question we have discussed that a committee is formed. So what are the recommendations of the committees we shall be looking at this aspect now. Okay so the committee has recommended the formation of a new government sponsor intermediary through the National Housing Bank specifically for housing finance companies to improve the mortgage bank securitization because many of the loan portfolios are in the form of mortgage bank securities. Now how will this intermediary have its advantages in the housing sector? Now this intermediary company can now be regulated by RBI. Also this intermediary company can expand its capital base to support growing business by raising crap capital from other private investors. So this move will now allow the separation of the lending and the refinancing activities of NHP. So earlier the refinancing activities and lending activities were merged with each other but now through this intermediary company the lending activities could be easily separated from the refinancing activities. Further the committee recommends that the initial capital of 500 crore should be there for stake of ownership the government will hold 51% which will be gradually brought down to 26% over 5 years. The remaining 49% may initially raise from multilateral agencies. The third suggestion by this committee is the investment allowance. Now the intermediary company would be allowed to invest in each pool it securitizes to the extent of 5% of the pool or 5% of its own capital, whichever is lower. Now we have discussed the recommendations of this six member committee. Now we have to answer that under whose chairmanship this committee was formed. So moving back to the question, on 29th May 2019, under the chairmanship of Harsh Vardhan, senior advisor of Bain and Company, this six member committee was set up. So our answer is option A. The next question that we are going to discuss is also related to the mortgage backed securitization concept. Now, the question says that companies usually engaged in direct transactions assignment or pass through certificate securitization. So what is the basic difference between the two modes? So let's have some discussion for this as well. The committee that we have talked about, it has also recommended separate regulatory guidelines for the direct transaction assignment also known as DTA and pass through certificates that is PTC securitization. Now this PTC involves ABS and MBS. MBS means the mortgage backed securities whereas ABS means asset backed securities. So as the name suggests mortgage backed securities are the securities that are created from the pooling of mortgages that are sold to the interested investors whereas ABS 
it is created from pooling of the non mortgage assets so these securities are usually backed by credit card receivables or home equity loans or student loans or auto loan now we shall see that what does dta and ptc stands for and what are their meaning so dta is basically sale of loan portfolios without the involvement of special purpose vehicle notice that here no special purpose vehicle is there unlike securitization where setting up of an spv is an imperative it is necessary under the ptc that is pass through certificate a special purpose vehicle is there and through this special purpose vehicle the ptc transactions take place so under this case three parties are involved seller which is the company or a bank that generate loans for the sale to issuers then we have the issuer who buy the loans from the seller and pool them together to release abs or mbs to investors and can be a spv as well and the last party is investor so these are the parties involved so if you want to know that how this ptc works or securitization works then let us look at an example suppose you go to a bank xyz to take a home loan and you get the mortgage from xyz bank further the xyz bank sells your loan sells your mortgage to abc company here it is acting as spv which could be governmental quasi governmental or the private entity now this abc company groups your mortgage with other similar mortgages that it has already purchased now in turn abc company sells the securities which is also known as ptc that is pass through certificates to investors in the open market that represent an interest in the pool of mortgages of which your mortgage is a small part also called the securitizing the pool so you must be wondering that how does the payment schedule will work then so when you make the monthly mortgage payment to xyz bank they keep a fee or a spread and then they send the rest of the payment to this spv or abc company in our example and then abc company in turn takes a fee and passes what's left of your principal and interest payment along to the investors who hold mbs so i ho hope that i have made myself clear in explaining the flow of how securitization work now moving back to the question the first option says under dta special purpose vehicle is set up whereas under ptc no spvs are required so this is wrong as we have seen in option b under dta rule true sales are made to the investors whereas under ptc no true sales are made to the investors so let me make myself clear that under both the cases be it dta or ptc true sales are made to the investors so there is no difference which is there in this point option c says under dta special purpose vehicles are not allowed while in ptc spvs are involved to complete the transaction between the issuer and investor so this is the correct answer because we have seen the mechanism of how ptc works and how dta works by giving directly the loan portfolios to the investors now we have got our answer but let's look at option d also under dta multiple investors cannot participate while in ptc multiple investors can participate so in a sense this statement is also not true because in ptc multiple investors can participate also in dta multiple investors but as a joint ownership can participate so this statement also turns out to be wrong so the correct answer is option c now moving on to the next question question 13 says what are the services that are covered under equalization levy so four options have been given to you in which different kind of services are there of these four options you have to choose the correct answer that under equalization levy which kind of services are involved now before answering this question let's understand that what equalization levy means so this is a new kind of direct tax that has been introduced in india in 2016 with the intention of taxing the digital transactions that is the income accruing to foreign e-commerce companies from india now what was the need to 
introduce equalization levy in India. So this equalization levy acts as a tax deducted at source on the payments to the offshore digital firms and taxing their profits efficiently is not easy for the department as either they may not be incorporated in India or they may not be recognizing their entire revenue in the arm which is incorporated in India. And as a result, this equalization levy has been in force since 2016 to tax the digital transactions. Now, the services which are covered under the equalization levy is the online advertisement. Now, you must be curious by this time that how this equalization levy works, what is the mechanism and how the tax has been charged, what is the rate applicable to the equalization levy. So I'll be answering all of these questions, but in the next question, which is also related to the equalization levy. For this question, understanding the meaning of equalization levy, the need and the services which are covered under equalization levy is sufficient. So moving back to the question, so various services are given and as you know that B, that is online advertisement is a correct answer here. So which companies will be most impacted by this equalization levy? Companies like Google or Facebook because they are the foreign e-commerce companies and taxing them is a really difficult task because of the two reasons that I've already told you. They may not be incorporated in India or they may not be recognizing their entire revenue in the arm which is incorporated in India. Now moving on to the next question related to equalization levy. The question is what is a tax rate applicable to the equalization levy? So four options have been given to you. You have to tell that what is the applicable rate of tax to the equalization levy. Now in the previous question I have discussed with you that search engines like Google or social networking glands like Facebook, Twitter, they will be having the impact of this equalization levy. Now notice the word here, Moolah Roo. What does this mean? So Moolah is a slang term that means money. So when you don't have enough money or Moolah to buy a car, you have to work and save for a while before you have got the Moolah to buy it. This informal word is similar to the bread or dome or clams, just a few of the many slangs word meaning money. So this is a moolah route for the central government because this tax is directly going to the government and it acts as a money route for them. Now have you noticed that this tax has been named the equalization levy tax. The word equalization denotes a significant meaning over here. It happens because the government is supposedly leveling the playing field and making companies such as Google and Facebook pay for the money they make from the local advertisers. You must have seen that many ads are there while you are going through Facebook through your news feed. So those advertisers pay money to such companies like Facebook in order to tax this type of transaction of online advertisement, equalization levy is there. So the tax rate which is applicable to equalization levy is 6% of the gross consideration. Now we will be looking that how this rate of tax is applicable in the next slide. So do listen to me carefully in order to understand the concept of equalization levy in a better way. So I have discussed with you that 6% of the gross consideration is the applicable rate of tax. So through an example, we'll be understanding how this works. Suppose there is a person named Rohan and he advertised on Facebook to expand his business. So he has to pay rupees 2 lakh in the financial year 17-18 to Facebook for the advertising services that he has away. Now the advertiser that is here Rohan needs to deduct the levy at source and deposit it with the Indian government on behalf of the offshore digital corporation that is Facebook here only if the advertiser has spent more than rupees 1 lakh on advertising on the overseas platform in the previous year. So as I've told you that it happens on a gross consideration basis. Now Facebook will bill 2,12,765 rupees. Of this 212765, we'll calculate the equalization levy at 6%. So this comes out to be 12765 and the rest 
2 lakh will go to Facebook here as I have told you and this 12765 will go to the government. So as you can see this is happening on a gross basis and this 12765 will be deducted at source by Rohan and he will pay it to the government. I hope that I have made the working of this tax clear to you. Now moving on to the next and the last question for today. What is the target set for renewable energy by the government of India to be achieved by 2030. The government of India has planned a target of 500 gigawatt of renewable energy to be achieved by 2030. The 175 gigawatt target was for 2022. So these are some figures that you have to remember in order to answer such type of questions which can definitely come in your examinations. So the green energy sector is booming in India because of the government's initiatives and many of the foreign countries are also interested in India's green sector. So with this we have completed our five questions of finance for today. I am hoping that you have understood all the concepts and if not then you can ask any of your queries in the comment sections without any second thought. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet then do subscribe to our channel so that you could get the regular updates. Thank you for watching the video.